macros are set up on it on low rate. I got 12 degrees on everything and 15 degrees on mid and high rate. Sounds good. Welcome back to Motion Odyssey Live, everyone. I'm James Alex. Behind the camera, it is episode 11, and today is March 19th. 
2021, and uh, we're having fun today. So uh, I want to call out Tony Jensen. Actually, I found that video. It's an older video on YouTube uh, from earlier in the year, but uh, I came across it. It popped up in my feed, and man, I, I love that Black Horse model. The Gilmore just looks good. The sound, I saw Jeff Custom RC call out the sound of that thing. Sounds really nice. That is definitely one, personally, that I would love to get my hands on. I like those type of oldie... You know, reminds me like a GB type, those old type racers. Um, and that Gilmore just, I like the color combination on it. I like the style of it. Um, definitely one I want to uh, hopefully eventually fly. And then we just had that little clip. We were doing some jumping on, um, I don't know if you guys saw, I built like a ramp for some of these car videos that we have coming up. So we were out the other day, Alex and I, uh, and just doing some jumps. And that was one Alex was trying to get a slow-mo shot. He wasn't in slow-mo <laughs> mode, but I end up jumping the ramp. He didn't film it, but it just hit my mailbox. And went off the other. We were just hysterical laughing. And, uh, you know, it's always a good time. It's always, you know, I have neighbors looking at me. What are you guys doing? We're working out here. <laughs> Go back inside. Um, but it's really, really funny. Um, so again, we titled this video. I titled it regularly scheduled programming just because last week, all dedicated to the March Mayhem tournament. And uh, this week we're taking a break from the March Mayhem because next week we will unveil the winners. Um, one thing I will say about it though, we have as of right now, almost 27, I think it's about 2,700 entrants wow. to the voting portion. This time, last year I only left about six days. So we did the live show announcement and then the next Friday we announced the winners. So it was only about six days of voting. So in the same portion of time, Last year, we had 756 total entrants. This year, we're at 2,700 already. We're almost four times the amount of entrants. I was not expecting that at all. So think about it this way. The person who wins this tournament this year is like on another level. Um, I remember when the, that day, I checked that night uh, last week, we had about 200 entrants, 250 entrants the first that Friday evening. And, um, you know, I checked, I did a quick peruse of who was winning, um, you know, like I have to go in and actually total some things up. It's all Excel and stuff like that. But I just did a quick idea and there was one plane that seemed to be in a lead. But when I went back to check uh, about three days ago, I checked again and it's a whole different structure. It's like, whoa, I think every single plane has at least, I will say at least one vote as a top and i don't think that happened last year um based on only 760 but all 64 entrants have multiple um or at least one person you know who voted them as the main winner so i can't wait to total it up and that'll be next week um and we're gonna see who wins that point total because remember the person who wins the best aircraft your aircraft just has to be voted the number one, the winner of the most brackets, and you're going to win the Gripen. But for the people in the voting, it comes down to a point system. So, you know, every single matchup, I'm going to tally up all the votes and so on and so forth and who gets through. But that's, uh, and the system does it that you're going on. But either way, it's awesome. I see Roach Coach in there, man. I got your helis. You shared them in our, we're going to share them in a little bit when we get to Hobby Squawk. Uh, I don't know if it was you, but somebody was complaining that there were no helis in the March Mayhem tournament, but then you shared this awesome heli <laughs> that you got that you didn't share into the March Mayhem tournament, and that might have made it in. It's, it would have. It probably would have. I, I think it, it would have definitely made it, and we'll get to that in a bit. But as for uh, today's show, so again, back to some regular stuff. We had, we had awful weather for a majority of this week. We couldn't get out and fly, couldn't get out and drive. We had tornado warnings. We had a tornado warning the other night down here across the south. If you're in Alabama and Mississippi, I hope um, you avoided that. Um, and it was wild because nothing actually hit us. We got the warnings. We were ready. I mean, I had the whole family. We're all in one, like, one room waiting to possibly run down to the basement, and nothing ever came. It didn't even – hardly any rain or wind. It was, like, weird. Um being that we seem to be in line, but it just dissipated or spread away from us. We got lucky. Um, but for those of you who might not have, um, you know, I hope everybody's okay from that. But uh, now the weather's starting to be good, so hopefully we'll get back outside. But we got a lot of videos can that are going to be coming out next week. This week we did some of the F8 Crusader stuff, flew the A10. Um, I never really did a video on that. That was awesome. And uh, obviously those quick tips. Um, people seem to be digging those, so more of those uh on the way for sure so let's get into it though we'll start with our community since we didn't do this last week we want to uh you know there's a lot of catching up to do if you will 
uh, two weeks worth of, you know, some of the stuff. And again, on certain place I can't find it, but the Hobby Squawk will be dedicated to what was shared in our uh, in our group. So this is Andre. Remember Andre? He does oh, yeah. a show. Blame Andre. He's got himself a hawk. He does a podcast. Um, what is it? The RC After RC Hours. After hour, yeah. RC After Hours. Andre. So if you're out there, Andre, check out his... Uh, he does an RC podcast. Got a, got a good show. I think he does it on both YouTube. Or now he's all on YouTube. Most, most podcasters now are just doing it through YouTube. But um, go check him out. Uh, Andre's a good guy. He has a good show. Has some uh, interesting interviews when he does get people on there. Alpha was on that channel at some point. I think I was a while back. But uh, he posted that in there. It was good to see and hear from him. So I hope you finally get out. Because I remember I talked to him a while back. He hadn't even flown his jets yet. He owned a few. But hadn't flown any of them. Then we got Wild Man. Wild Man. Again, going by your squawk handle. I love what you're doing to this uh, Corsair. You got your Flightline Corsair. And he is doing some scale detail work. Especially the cockpit work. So I believe these are the files you guys can get on Thingiverse. You can get to us. <laughs> I, I'm just reading you RCM Marshall. Of us. RCM yeah. Marshall, you silly New Yorkers. Tor tornado warnings are for babies. <laughs> you don't even get out of bed. Well, what was what was interesting about it was in the morning, because we were supposed to get that tornado at 7 in the morning or like another, you know, there was supposed to be one at midnight, nothing happened. And then at around 6, 7... At least the night before, they were saying when it would come. And then we got a warning on all our phones, but it turned out to be an Amber Alert. Yeah. But the warning came, and, like, at first, I just started, like, oh, let's oh, run downstairs. And then I looked at it, and, you know, Amber Alerts are also an awful thing. But, um, you know, it was just wild timing that that would happen at the same time as you're expecting something else. So, for a second, we all got confused. But Wild Man, loving the Corsair and the detail work you're doing to it. The 3D printed parts look great. Um... Keep us updated. It looks, it looks fantastic. But now we're getting a Roach Coach. Where is he? Where was this? Where was this? What, 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 <laughs> why is this shared during the voting period? Like, you shared this in the thread for this show, but not in the March Madness thread. Clearly, nobody read the rules. Aircraft. It was all aircraft. Anything that flies was allowed in the March Mayhem uh, tournament. And that looks stunning. I want to see more pictures of it. And then you had another one. So that's your Bell 206. And then you had the MD-500. Uh, you wrote MD-500-600. Um, they both look awesome, man. Great helis. Would love to see some videos if you're getting it, if you, uh, if you can get any. Uh, but they look stunning. Keep us, keep us updated. Uh, Pauly Architect. <laughs> I, li I like this one. He saved this. Is that a cigar in the shark's mouth? I, I'm like looking at it. I don't know if it's just like part of the foam, but it almost looks like it has a... It has a it has a uh, cigar in the mouth or something but i don't know if he made this himself or if it was purchased and put together but it looks like eps foam uh it, it looks awesome looks fun to fly so that was really cool i always like that uh icarus the second i i dig this man and i believe this video we have some video of this that he he fired up i like this f-18 with the tiger scheme on top and on the uh the tails there on the verticals i think that looks really sweet nice and subtle you know if the whole plane was that color it would probably be a little loud, loud yeah. but you know when it's like that that looks great and again another one he submitted the belgium t33 that i think's in the comp no i no, think he, he, just, he just, just missed it he up. just missed it but this might have been you know go bangles and <laughs> go bangles unless i'm forgetting this might have made last year maybe he submitted it last year um couldn't get in I thought this was funny from you, Weedman. Just it was like a joke. <laughs> but he's like, this is my March Mayhem submittal. I saw this pop through. I thought that was really funny. I don't know what's going on in that picture. If the, the size proportions are really, <laughs> you know, I, I think it's just one of those ones you put together. But he made it look like it's bigger than it's supposed to be. Playing with perspective. I thought that was a funny joke. Uh, then we had Biker Patriot. I dig this, man. Keep us updated on this. Uh, you're saying you're building this this cup so uh that looks pretty sweet i like the floats i like looks like the little uh xk one that i yeah, i just did a video <laughs> alex was like is that the xk one with some floats i'm like man that, that would be that would be pretty stellar for a hundred bucks so that's awesome there are videos oh roach post the links in uh in the in the hobby squawk thread man maybe we'll get them on the show next week we'd love to see it i'll put a little edit together of a few of your helis if you got multiple videos but that's awesome. 
Uh, and then we had Arthur J. Arthur, he's usually in here sometimes. I like this NASA scheme on his AL-37. Cool looking shot. Well composed. Almost looks real. Uh, but I dig that too. So that was uh, catching up. Now a few other, uh, few other stuff got posted on the Squawk page. Um, that wasn't Motion RC stuff. So again, I I'll try to show it, but... You know, if it's not Motion RC, you're on the wrong live show, you know? <laughs> I mean, like, we're, you know, we're not, I don't think it should be anyone's, uh, you know, I think everyone should understand that we are Motion RC and we want to see the stuff we distribute and sell. So, uh, that's that. Heading through Facebook. Facebook was tough to pour through. Um, I tried my best to find, you know, I could. I could post, we could spend a whole hour going through the Facebook posts in a two week span, but uh, where are we starting, Alex? We got uh, Andrew Smith's F 18 is the first video here. Andrew Smith, oh, his F 18, okay, let's see this. One. Oh, yeah, this, this was. Is a photo shoot. So, this is the photo shoot of the photo of the jet that is in the March Mayhem tournament. Uh, I remember he posted this uh, like a day or two before uh, for people, which I thought was really funny. Um, I don't know if he's, that's a. That's a heck of a vape. If that's, that's, a, a vape. that's a large vape. <laughs> it's a smoke machine <laughs> for sure. But it looked really good and he got a stunning photo. So uh, if he goes through. Ignacio, there's a link in the description for a Motion RC mug. You could buy on the website. We have some in stock. But also, guys, uh, the Teespring store. It, I announced it, what, two weeks ago, a week ago? Um, and then there was like a technical difficulty. Teespring like switched over their format. They changed our entire, like, right, like, it happened two days after. They changed the, the link and everything. So now everything's back, and uh, you could click. I'm sure you guys might be seeing the product right now uh, on every video. If you click on one of those, you could get to our store. And uh, I posted the link back in Facebook. I'll put it on Squawk, but I just want to make sure nothing else changes before, uh, you know, before we go through. But I got some different mugs. There are some different mugs through Teespring you can get. Uh, one with the eye... I'm, Contrail RC and uh, something like this. So I, I ordered myself some of the Teespring stuff because I want to see it myself, but I hope that goes well. So if you're interested in swag, check out the link. There's a lot of stuff on there now. Um, going through, so Andrew Smith, awesome, and I'm not going to make any, I don't know who's winning at all right now. I have, I have no, no idea. idea. So I could say I really enjoyed the video part at the end, like seeing the details. The details. The it really looked great. Great job, yeah, Andrew. That's a stunning. A stunning F-18 paint job. <laughs> that would be amazing if you were wearing the right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> If I had the tights on underneath, yeah. I'm going to do it. Just throw the leg up. Everyone who does, if you're watching these live shows at night, like, I, I think most of the guys probably have set up the Teespring store because it just, it it's easy. It interacts easily with uh, YouTube. And again, being that we're an RC company, sourcing shirts is not what we do best. Uh, it's a pain in the butt to try to find the right materials and you know, to order in bulk, to get them in. You don't know what's going to, you know, what's going to sell. Whereas Teespring, they have all those options. You just upload the artwork. And then obviously with Teespring, though, it takes time for you to get your product. You know, like they got to print it. Usually they wait. So if you buy like a shirt today, they might wait a week before they actually print it. They try to, I guess, stack up how many people are going to order that design. So they only have to screen it once and whip out the shirts. Um, I think that's how it works. But either way, um, uh, you know, you see the tights on there. That was like one of the first things they put. Everybody's got to get tight. So that's really funny. Uh, moving on, Brent Hacked. I love this. So we all saw his his Blue Angels A4. He submitted to the tournament. It did not make it. His P80 made it. But he went out with his Bearcat 2. And man, that uh, I love that shot. I used this shot coming up as a thumbnail just because that's a beautiful looking shot. And he makes both of them look like glass. Uh, you know, check out... Brent Hex, he's got YouTube channels, uh, and he talks about, you know, how he does that to his models. I mean, they look, they look like glass, fiberglass models. They don't look like foam. They look, you know, really, really stunning. I thought that looks awesome. So, oh, Dave, you're having fun today. <laughs> <laughs> you want, you want to see me in a Teespring banana hammock? You got to pay for that, my friend. <laughs> Uh, we had Jeremy Salt. I like this post. I always love when him and his son get out there. If anybody else flies with their, uh, with their kid, but this is him and his son flying an F-14, and then they converted, uh, I think it's an F-5 you convert to the MiG-28, like they did in Top Gun. I think they used, what was it, F-5s, I believe, to 
to mimic uh, MiG-28s, which was the bad guy in Top Gun. So uh, he posted that, and then just some shots. Uh, they went out to a show, I guess, last one of the weekends, and uh, <laughs> I would not pay to see that. Uh, <laughs> You know, and, and Jeremy, they always they always get some stunning photos. He'll make some, he'll dump some photos out there, like 56, 30, you know, 56 pics in a photo dump, and they just all look awesome. Um, so definitely check those out. But I love his, you know, his uh, KC-135 fueling up the, the F-16. You guys have seen that. Two F-14s, then his E-7 Wedgetail. Uh, you know, he's got a ton. Yep, Jeremy sold F-5 to MiG-28. I thought so. I saw a couple of guys did that actually. Somebody else posted it up too. I think we'll uh, we'll get to that. Then we had Jim Jets. This guy, I believe, flies at his own field. Like he flies in his backyard, and he'll always randomly post. Just he brings out every single one of his <laughs> planes, dumps them onto the field, and just take and post up a photo. It looks. I love that. You know, at least got. Looks like he has a good time. Who wouldn't love to be able to walk out the door, and just go fly? But that's awesome. And now the first of many I saw throughout the last two weeks on Facebook seems to be a lot of people painting up 64 millimeter F-22s. Uh, we just got out with ours. I recently just finally got my hands on one of these myself. I might have to paint one in a wild You're color. Have to do it yellow too. We got Mark Faulkner doing it in yellow, which I love. And he accented the, uh, the little like panels that are on the 22 with black. I thought that looked sweet, and I, I want to see what he does when he gets some uh, decals, if he's going to put any decals on it. But for a 64 millimeter model, maybe can we find the next one? There were other F-22s. There we go. We have Mark Ruby, who went a little... Leveled it up a little bit. Leveled it up, and he went even harder on the yellow, which I thought was awesome. And even put some, like, Thunderbirds underneath the wings for uh, orientation, I guess, for vision. But that looks stunning. And then Paul Mullen. Oh, we'll, we'll get to this. Oh, some of the decals put Corvette graphics on it and stuff. <laughs> they look really cool. I dig this. It, it's like, you know, I like fantasy just as much sometimes as full scale. And then we got Paul Mullen, who went pink. And I showed this to my daughters. They loved it. They want me to do it. I, uh, I dig it. Pink is, pink it takes a real man. Real men wear pink. I love it. With the yellow accents, like you're not gonna not see that on a <laughs> on a cloudy day or a bright day. I dig. I had a pink uh, lip fish at one point. My daughter made me yeah. fly that, and I ended up crashing it and turning it into <laughs> a. Uh, that was the one we turned into the twin lip fish. If you guys were around back then, uh, tired iron aviation, George Baker. Uh, we put two lip fishes together and made a twin. It was awesome. So that was uh yeah a lot of those came out when Barbie gets an F twenty two. Hey, Ken would not, you know. Hey, why not? It's 2021, baby. It's 2021. <laughs> Kevin Garland loved a few of these photos of your AL-37, especially this one. That looks real. Yes. Love the sunset. That's like a, that's a background shot. That's a wallpaper for your desktop wallpaper shot if you're an AL-37 fan. And then here it is. Uh, he has no decals on it, so I wonder what he's going to do. Uh, what the plan is for this looks like he was just doing a maiden you know, like you should, maiden before you customize, make sure it flies well, get used to it, then, uh, you know, go through. And then John Killen. So John, he posts a ton. He like, he takes over the Facebook group, but I loved this picture. He submitted his Corsair. Uh, he submitted this picture and the one that made the tournament. So this Corsair has made the tournament, but I just thought this photo didn't showcase enough of the plane. Um, but, but I love it. Like you could tell it's got like the whole fake detail in the back. Something about this shot is just, that's another excellent wallpaper type right. shot. Love it, John. Uh, love it, man. He, he goes nuts with this stuff. And I saw, I think he just posted this morning that he's going to be doing, uh, you posted a 30 second scale, I believe, or 72 scale, another F4 scheme. Does that mean you're buying another F4 to do another F4 scheme? Cause you already got three. I think you used to have four, and then <laughs> you crashed one. Now you're down to three, so you're trying to get back up to four. Uh, that's uh, I can't wait to see it, but it looks like a good scheme if you're going to do it. Keep us posted, as I'm sure you're going to. Uh, Mark Moser, I don't know if he's ever in the show, but 
I love this. Did you guys come come across this? I missed this when it first got posted. You know, sometimes by the time I check, like certain posts, um, you know, Facebook does a very hard to like, you know, post will just disappear. Yeah. yeah. Stop telling me what I want to see and just let me. I always end up sorting by recent activity uh, or you could sort by order posted. Yeah. That's how I find the stuff for the show. I'll just scroll through in the order. Um, but I love this. It's like a Delta version of the F5. Like how we did this. I wonder how it'll fly. Um, it looks like it's going to float for days. But I, I, I want to know more. This looks really cool. So, that, that's awesome. And then Robert Knox, we do have video of this too. Love what you've done with your OV-10. I like, saw this pop through. Love the gray and just, you know, nice and clean. And I like the spinners too. I like that they pop. So you definitely see those. But I love the customizations the guys do on the OV-10s as well. But Knox, we're going to show uh, in the YouTube section, we got a little, uh, little bit of noxie's youtube channel i just subscribed just found it when he posted um you know we'll show that in a second ah here it is miguel angel duarte he has his custom su-35 and his f5 converted to a mig-28 top gun so went with uh russian death uh over there but i i love these posts as well they look really cool i like this i like the su-35 in that dark scheme and then more up close shot of the uh of the mig 28 looks really good just looks mean you know yeah looks mean i hope i hope you painted the pilots all the pilots had full black you know in the bad guys in top gun full black <laughs> and we had mickey snelson i i dug this too this is your conversion of the f5 um i believe you submitted this was one of the ones that i was surprised didn't make uh the march mayhem tournament i think it was one that maybe i chose and then didn't but i think he only recently finished off the uh the nose the painting the nose black so the picture by the time i think that came after the march mayhem tournament so maybe maybe that would have pushed some other people over but it was real close and then just recently this morning finally people starting to post some surface stuff in the uh customer community robert hagson painting up his tiger one from henlong which we hope to be getting our stock soon on our Henlong tanks uh, back again. And hopefully we're not going to ever run out again. It's just bad timing with how that all went down. But I can't wait. I got still have some notifications of some of the other tanks that I wanted to get my hands on. Tiger 1 being one of them. I wanted some of those older German tanks uh, as well. But looks really good. And then Ryan. Ryan Seibel or Siebel. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. But I uh, was happy to see this. We made. I love the pictures you shared of your row band. Uh, it was good to see. I made it the the uh, cover photo for right now in the customer community. I thought it looks awesome. And he posted a video of him. You know, I think this was his maiden. Uh, you know, or maybe he did some flights. I think with helis, you want to pick them up, trim them, land them, pick them up, trim them, land them before you actually fly. But this was his maiden flight, just flying around. And they sound and look so good. I I I must be a broken record when I say that about these Roban helis, but they are something else entirely to see in person. If you ever get a chance or know of a heli field near you or go to a heli show, a lot of times they're smaller than any plane shows, but the guys who go to them usually have a lot of, lot of amazing helis and they will, you know, and when you see them up close, it's, it's a whole nother level of RC, just something completely different. But Ryan, I, I love seeing this man, and I heard, I think you had said that you were going to possibly um, customize this, like repaint it or something, and I don't even know if you have to. It looks great to me, but that's awesome. It just sounds so good. <laughs> love it. Love it. And then, did we have any other videos? I think uh, there might have been one. Facebook, Move up. Am I missing anyone? No, we got them all. So that does it for our Facebook uh, customer community. So let's move on to YouTube. We had a few things that I found. Again, um, it's hard. I I try to subscribe to everybody, then I'll check the subscriptions and go through it. But you know, it's hard to to find everything. It's it's unbelievable the amount of content that's out there. You could spend your entire life uh, looking for stuff. But I, let's start with Luis Lopez. This is Cash Money, brother. So he made it, this F-86. If you want to go check out 
Uh, he does some really good customizations. He's Cash Money Brother on Hobby Squawk, and he's Luis Lopez on YouTube. But he has a video where he just talks about uh, all the stuff he did and how he painted this up. But he converted to, I guess, an F2J, I believe it is, FJ2. Um, and it just looks awesome. Um, he made the tournament with this with this one going up against uh, someone else's saber. And it looks great. So we'll see what happens in there. But if you want to check that out, give him a follow. For sure. Then Noxie's YouTube. Here it is. He was flying around his that uh, OV-10 you just saw. So he customized it as a USAF 19th TASS. Uh, and does a whole video where he, you know, does some nice images of it some motion and then uh he edits it together with you know cuts all the good stuff so he's one of the guys who's gonna cut out all the minutiae and get right to uh the passes and you know look good he almost hit the side there though <laughs> i was like he's heading towards the trees but it's a bronco it's it, the one thing i love about the bronco it is made for rough terrain you got a rough field get yourself a bronco smooth <laughs> love that but uh Bronco's just a, a sweet flying aircraft, good for a beginner. I like it because I just look at it, if you want a stall plane that's also scale, uh, you know, or Warbird, like, it's perfect for that. You can have some fun on a super windy day with some short takeoffs and landings on the, uh, on the OV-10 Bronco, for sure. Then, oh, uh, John BHRC, I saw him in here. Man, I was happy to see this video pop up on your channel with your tiger one so it was like one tiger one pops up and then another one pops up it's like it's just the way things go but uh i love this you know it's hard to to film tanks you gotta really you know gotta be patient with them because they're you know they're slow they're not they're not for action but what i really we never got to do like right as these tanks come out we were all planning on building models we we're gonna take them to jonal building buildings and we're gonna have a tank battle and eventually i want to do it um once this COVID thing goes out, because I want to see a video of 15 of these tanks, you know, having a tank war. So hopefully that'll eventually be able to take place because I'm halfway done. I finished my like the front side of my building and then just stopped. It was like that was right when COVID happened. And then I was like, well, I guess I don't need this for now. So it's on the back burner. One of those unfinished projects that just doesn't need to be finished yet. But I love it. Take it. This is what you do with them. Take them. Try to traverse terrain. But when you have two or more of them, and the fact that they can, uh, and the fact that they can, uh, what's it called? Shoot each other and target each other and play games. That's what's great about the tanks. And you saw the people doing it to their planes now too, which is really, really awesome as well. Then we got Icarus the second. So this is that uh, Tiger F-18. And uh, we showed his channel a few times, but definitely check him out. Good pilot, nice videos. He shows full flights of of his aircraft, and oh, he's got he's great. got the afterburner on it. I don't know which one um, which one he's using. Uh, if it's RC Geeks or if it's Guniax or if it was um, Light Burners uh, before, uh, or if it's something else entirely, because I'm sure there are probably others out there too. But those are the three that I that were very prominent in there. But it looks. I love it when it when it flickers. Flickering really looks good, especially at this time of night. Yeah, that sky's perfect, right? Now. Yeah, like just good enough to uh, get in there. Did you bring it by for some high alpha? I can try to time up the graphic. Uh, we'll, call it, we'll call it there. Go! Oh, it's a tank. It's a tank <laughs> with the tank trying to shoot it. But good work, Icarus. Go check out his channel, guys. Give him a follow. And then last in the uh, YouTube portion was DJ Moosecom, a uh, new channel that I found. He, he seems to know his stuff. Uh, new channel starting out, but I like some of the ways he's editing his videos, uh, doing a little graphic on it. But he's got his F8, F-15, and it's the high-performance version of the F-18. And watching this video, to me, it seemed like it, it's like the MiG now in that it seems like, obviously, it's a big, heavy model, but the high-performance fan moves it around and make looks like it's, you know... A lot different than it used to be i think when this aircraft came out the power system still might not have been where they needed to be for a model super scale like the f-15 but now uh that technology is caught up and i love that landing he smooths it in puts the air brake up at the end uh but either way i gotta get back out with my f-18 
uh, F15 as well. Uh, but that was awesome. So German-made LED burners, uh, airborne jetworks. Is that what you're for uh, that F15? The F18. There's too many numbers, too many <laughs> Fs and numbers. But uh, that about rounds up the uh, social. So for the last two weeks, so hopefully uh, you got in there. If you're gonna get, uh, if you want to get in next week's show, then uh, you know always submit. The link is in the description. Any link that's important uh, to this show is gonna be in the description of this. Make a twin F15E. It's funny that F18E that's in the March Mayhem tournament from Jets and Wings was one of the ones on the cusp, which I thought was crazy. That was not on me, but it was a cusp one. I think that's one of, you know, one of the ones that I think is one of the best ones out there, the way uh, Robert converted the F15R version to the F15E. Uh, but yeah, I, I like the the Strike Eagle with that, that darker gray, like the F35. I like that gray more than the lighter gray aircraft for sure. But... um. I, w I would love to see it too. Who knows? I mean, who knows? When when it's time for the next thing, we'll let you know for sure. So now we're going to get on with the uh, Hellcat. So I unboxed this the other day, and I'm going to get started because it's time for me to fly a gasser. So Alex can play the time lapse of how I took it out, and I'm going to bring up all the pieces on the table. So this is the Nexa Hellcat. And again, I'm putting the 17cc... Uh, NGH motor in it, but I gotta get. I want to get it built up first, and then I'm gonna get working on tuning up the motor for the first time before I mount it. I want to get it purring nicely on the table first, and then on the test stand, if you will, and then mount it to the aircraft. But I want to try to get the aircraft built. Before next week's show, I think I should be able to do that. At least get all the servos in, get it all together, but grabbing all the pieces so we can go through it. So again, it is always good to, uh, you know, to uh, show you what comes in these boxes because you get a lot of stuff in these kits and they're well built. And this is a little different than the last one I did, which was the uh, P40. So. This is like a three-piece wing that becomes a one-piece wing, but just different uh, in the way it goes together. So these are all the pieces, and I just had them on the floor next to me here on a little table. But you get your nose, you get your nose art, and what I like, you get a couple sheets for, uh, you know, if you have any dents or dings, you could cover them up. So you got the blues to match all the different blues, and then the bottom, I believe the green. Is that green or gray? That's green, right? That's gray. That's gray. <laughs> Am I that colorblind? Maybe a little greenish. I was like, that's got to have some green in there. <laughs> I don't know. But on that, so then you see uh, right here, we could say, so this is like your center section. And what I like here, everything, again, pre-installed retracts. Same retracts as on the, on the P40, the ones I crushed that, <laughs> that first time <laughs> I showed you guys. Uh, in the video so that again I stalled it a little too high on the runway but this is a good looking bird I, I, I was excited I never flew a Hellcat I like the I like the style of the Hellcat and the Bearcat um, I'm expecting it to fly nice and uh, gentle but I think it's a good setting because I, I, I'm I'm most comfortable flying war, warbirds and tail draggers I feel so that's why if I'm going to do my first gasser I want it to be something that is comfortable uh, for me something I'm used to and <laughs> You know, a warbird that should, you know, not be squirrely on the ground. I think a Hellcat satisfies that. And also, uh, you know, uh, just nice and floating. Because in the air, I, I know it's going to fly. It's going to fly awesome. But then you get your wings. So you're going to have the servos. Now, i got to find if they have covers. I think they do have covers that go on after. But these weren't on before. But I like um, all the riveting work. And the uh, roundels, if you will, that's all part of the covering. So that's not a sticker. That's part of the covering, which is nice. And the doors. So you can really detail it out. But it doesn't look too, you know, any harder than any of the other balsa ones that I put together thus far. Oh, and then you get, that's what I'm forgetting. You get all your rods. So you got all your control rods. And I like the metal clasps. I think that's always done in a nice, solid uh, spar that's gonna that's gonna stretch across the entirety of the wing. So if I lay that on the uh, 
on the top of here if you zoom out you know you're gonna have a lot of spar in the middle and through the wing as well so it's not going anywhere which is nice just started and then some of the other bits and pieces. So let's take a look at the fuse while I have it here before I knock. Oh, we'll do the cowl. How about that? Cowl, again, fiberglass molded. And I like, you know, the paint matches perfectly. It's not, you know, it's, they definitely painted it the same way. Sometimes I know with some, you know, sometimes you get a plane in the cowl just because it's a different uh, material. The color might not be spot on to what's on there. But uh, this looks good. Now, obviously, this is what this is going to be a like tricky part. I know myself. I'm going to end up. I'm probably going to end up getting the motor like ready to go. You know, all good. And then I'm going to when I go to cut the cow, I'll probably do it wrong and butcher it. That's what I. That's what I don't want to do because you're going to have to somehow. You know, at some point, the way it's mounted. So I just put the motor. I put the you know the exhaust on. Um, but obviously, this is going to have to like stick out somewhere. Ooh. Maybe it doesn't, but yeah, I mean, there has to be some, yeah, it's gonna, it's definitely gonna have a hole just for that to pop out, but it looks like it'll get in there somewhere, but we'll figure that out at the end. But that's the motor we're going for, gonna be, or in some sort of orientation, we'll figure that out when it goes, but that'll be right on the front, and we got the blue, some matching blue on the front. And I don't have a wood propeller for this one. I'm going with the APC. It's our gas version. But uh, 15 by 8. So I'm going to go with that first. And then I'll move on. But I'm going to use one of the ones we got. Uh, when we get to the maiden time. As far as the servos. I'm going with the high techs. Uh, these, are our these are the recommended for the uh, aircraft. I believe for all the wings. So for your flaps and your ailerons. It's the HS85 BBs. This, this one over here. There you go. These, <laughs> the HS85, four of them. And then for the uh, for everything else, I'm going to go with the 485 HBs. So I'll probably go with one of these for now the throttle, because now I need eight, right? One for the throttle. And looking right, oh, I didn't even check yet. Let's see, underneath. Is it two for the elevators? No, I'll probably, it'll probably end up being seven in total. I would think one for the rudder, one for the elevators. I haven't gotten into the linkage portion. Yep, they give you the three-way the three -way connector, so it's going to be two rods, so you'll control one servo to control your elevator, one servo for your rudder. Um, I shouldn't need one for the tail. No, that'll be in the rudder. So, yeah, it should be seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven for your throttle. Yep, I should only need seven, so I'll need three of the... I bought the... We got the four-pack. I didn't buy it, but... Yeah, that's, <laughs> I didn't buy it, obviously. But uh, three of the 485s and four of the 85s. So that's what I'm going with there. So that's the peripheral stuff. I'm going to use the, uh, you know, the, the gas container and, and the stuff that's supplied with the model... And then this was some of the extra bits that I grabbed with the motor. So I grabbed some extra tubing. And we got this on here. The Dubro tubing is what I'm going with. Uh, you know, put that through. That's for uh, gasoline. That tubing can hold. It's not going to deteriorate or anything. The yellow stuff is what you want. I got a switch. So I'm going to get that switch, figure out where that goes. So I can switch it on. I always wanted one of these. <laughs> so you just, boom start it up uh, when it's time and then this is what we sell uh, NJH sells and we got them on the website but this one I'm gonna make with my I'm gonna use for my test stand so when I build the test stand I want to I'm gonna build it in such a way that uh, I'll have room that I can open these up because these are these are universal uh, motor mounts so any NGH that I go to um, uh, any, any NGH motor that I want in the future, I'll be able to move these out and get wider. Because, I, I like I said, I, my plan is if I can learn it here on this 17cc one, then I'm going right to the Zero or the P47. We're going to go with the biggest one possible. We're going to go right to the big one. And uh, we go through and go. Um, am I running everything on separate channels, Dave? No, I mean, I, I don't. I mean, separate channels, what do you mean? In in your up. sense. If not, hope you have a high tech servo programmer. I can't run 
well, I mean, this is the same servo setups that I have in any of my other planes. Um, so I'm wying my ailerons, wying my flaps, wying the elevator. No, well, you don't need to wire the elevator because only one elevator servo, only one rudder servo. Um, no, I'm just thinking, what, it's four channels for those. Fifth channel for the gear, sixth channel for the throttle. Um, and then I'm probably going to plug in my receiver separately. Uh, I'm going to use those Admiral NICAD packs. So, like, I with most of, you know, most of my balsa stuff, for whatever reason, I've been going the route where I... Uh, you know, power up my receiver separately from, you know, from the, from the, uh, the gas and the throttle. But again, I haven't gotten there yet, so we'll figure it out. But overall, I'm excited. Then you get your peripheral stuff. So you got, you know, at the bottom, once your wing is mounted, I guess this, you know, this we're going to cut and get on there to, uh, cover up any of the detail underneath. Again, this is probably for, I think that's for back there. We'll see. Then they give you, for the landing gear, they give you these, like, so wooden cutouts. I don't actually know what these are for yet. I haven't looked through the manual. But they give you that. These are standoffs. I believe they all have to do with mounting, because um, you, you, you're putting the hard bit on the molded part, and then that mounts to the, to the, side, of the side of the gear. So I believe that's, and then you have the doors that'll be on the front that you decal up at point, and then these look like antennas. I would believe, yeah, the antennas, because you could put the string across. So these are for the, that's going to be for the vertical, this little bit. And then the, uh, that's going to be, they give you three of them, but I think you only need one. And that's going to be on top of the fuselage right about here. And then you can attach it with a string. And I used, um, the way I did my, when I did the, uh, what's it called? When I did the uh, 262. 262, I instead of using an actual thread, I used wire, wire hanger, like you hang a picture with. So it's nice and you can make it nice and straight and it's more taut, like it, it won't, it won't move if you get it, if you stretch it. So I'll probably end up using that again, because I'm going to make it look like that. And then eventually, we can go to a three bladed prop uh, at some point, but I'm going to fly it on a two blade, make it more efficient for my first uh, for my first gas attempt and um, well I've had plenty of gas but not like that <laughs> Did it do but um, you got all your hinges so same as anything else uh, they look like they're gonna go through so they give you two sides to the clips for some of them you screw through and catch it on the other side you have the nylon hinges which, you know, I guess you paint over. I, what you could do, actually, if you don't like the side, because one side will be on, exposed, you can use, you cut a little bit out of the, uh, of the decal. I could probably cover that if you, if you really, you know, don't like having things, you know, showing that wouldn't be there in real life. You could get away with that. Uh, motor mount. It says for 46 on it, so I guess... I don't even know if I'm, I'm not even going to need this because I'm going to use, I'm going to use the mounts that come with the aircraft for the actual motor itself. Said an electric kill is advised on gas engines. I use Smartfly fiber optic electric kill switches. It isolates the ignition module from the receiver. I like that, George. I might have to look into it um, for sure. I'm just excited to get it set up. Now that the weather's good, I'm going to, I got to, that's probably what I'm going to do this weekend is build the test stand get it ready to go, get it mounted. And then the only thing left, I, I bought a, um, I got the Dubro, uh, why am I forgetting what it's called? You <laughs> know, that, that's no, the wine you, the, to fill or to, to fuel up. You, uh, you wind it up to pull the fuel from the can and put it into the motor. I got one of those. I just need to go get myself a nice can. Uh, that's the only thing that I'm missing and the fuel itself. I don't want to buy it yet until I'm at that point that I need it. Um, you know, and then get the proper mixture. So I'm going to follow the NGH. I'm going to find exactly, you know, I'm going to follow it exactly by the book of what they recommend, and and going that route. Then you get your vertical, you got your elevator, and again with these you're going to have to do. So they are, you know, the hinges. The way Nexa works with most pieces, they'll they'll hinge one side for you. So like that's glued in, but always tug on it when you get these guys because. I did have one where it was supposed to be, but it wasn't, it, or it pulled out. They didn't use enough glue. You know, it happens in every <laughs> everything. You always want to check these out yourself, but those are glued on really nice. So then that should just, you know, that's just going to glue in there. 
uh, like so. So you only have to do one side. Hinging something that is never fun for me. But let me check. So this is done. So I'm tugging on that. So the flap hinging is done, which is nice. And then, but you want to check again. And I believe, yep, ailerons and flaps on this side because you're running. Oh, wait a minute. Is that what I need? Oh, look at that. Now I see, I might have to get a couple more. Oh, okay. Now I have the right. Okay, we're doing the bigger servos for the ailerons, the smaller servos. All four of those 485s are going to be for the flaps. So it's four, it's obviously it's two panel flaps across. So you're getting flaps, but you see the pockets now that I'm looking at it. So they're going to be, so I'm going to have those all together. So that's going to be crazy. We're going to have two Ys, then wide. I'll probably, no, I'll probably use extra channel, two channels for the flaps then, um, and just mix those together. That'll probably be how I go with that route. But then, so these are the smaller servos. So all four of the 485Bs, so then that means I have one, two, three, four. So I need one more servo, that means. Because then I'm going to use the four big ones. I'm missing, so I, I have more servos, that's not a problem. So my throttle servo, I'll just find, you know, I, I'm sure I have another one. So actually it's, so I was wrong, it's going to be nine nine servos yeah one rudder one elevator two aileron are going to be are going to be the bigger ones that i got then the four smaller ones because you need four for your flaps so that's already eight and then one more for the uh for the throttle so all right so i'm glad we figured that out here before i before i got started <laughs> but i i have i have enough leftover servos from some of the other ones give us a nice spin there on the uh fuse showed off it's not you. oh oh yeah we didn't get to the fuse yet give me a chance guys we got time uh but here we go we show you underneath everything's in there now i will say this one of these had they can pull out you know they slide so if you want to put some glue these are the uh tubes to help you route out the back when i pulled it out one had pulled through the back so i had to I, I had to pull it back through. There's like a hole in each balsa that it fo follows all the way through. A little bit of a pain when you're trying to do it in the back, but I, I managed to catch it. Uh, one of these over here, it was. But So just be mindful of that. You may want to put some tape on it so as you're manipulating it, you don't you know, mess that up. But pilot's already done inside. And I like the same next guy as the, uh, I think it's the same as the P40, but he looks good. You know, he looks better than the, me262 guy for sure <laughs> but uh you know you got some cockpit detail in there if you want to see the uh you got the gauges i'll move it even closer there you go looks good and then it's magnets so four magnets and i like these they are very you know they're very strong probably medium magnets but you got four magnets in the side and it pops right off now the spacing on this could be a little toit but we'll see but I assume my fuel tank is gonna be right up front there I would guess or probably the other way well no I need to be able to fill it easily so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it that way but we'll figure it out when it when we get there or it's going to be back here depending on the cg but i'm assuming with any warbird i'm going to want as much no uh weight towards the nose as humanly possible and then i'll be interested to see i've never flown a gas plane uh how do you guys obviously the plane cg does it change too much when you know as you're using fuel obviously um you're losing weight so you know you want to you want to cg it on an empty tank and then expect to be nose heavier on a full tank. Um, you know, that's something I got to look into when I get to that point. But uh, let me know. Let me know what you guys, how you guys do it. But either way, it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful kit. Um, part of me says just throw an electric motor on it and call <laughs> it a day. But I, I got to do it. I, I want to get into gas. And who knows? Same way after I fly these balsa ones, I, I, I can't love them more than I do now, uh, having built. As many as I have, um, even though it isn't a lot in standard, well, but I'm sure it's a lot more our, than our some people get a chance to. CG after full, CG on empty. Which one is it, guys? Oh man! In the manual, CG should we should I empty. check? We got another another vote for CG with empty tank. I would I in my head I would think CG empty because 
nose weight, at least I'll fly. You know, I don't mind being nose heavy, even though it won't fly as well. I'd rather not be tail heavy. Then I'll have a problem. Again, but uh, empty, carefully empty. install the fuel tank. Okay, so they tell me to install the fuel tank the opposite direction of what I said. <laughs> so, okay. So I was wrong. Now, this engine they have on there is completely different looking than, than mine, at least as far as the exhaust. So, does it matter the orientation that you mount a gas motor? Did I see some? I don't think it, you know, they're giving me, you know, they give me down. So, it looks like I'm going to be mounted like this. Does that make a difference? I don't think it would make a difference. Gas tank close to the CG, Pontiac. Okay. So that's how they're telling me to mount it. That way, but that, they get right to mounting the engine is step two. What's step <laughs> one? Step one is mounting, yeah, so so the end doing the engine mount first. I'm skipping that. I'm gonna get the plane built first and just have it ready to go because if i fail at the electric if i fail on the test table then fuel i go fuel tank on the cg so fuel tank on the cg so back okay wow you might have to build this live right. so we can get some, <laughs> some like feedback can you imagine me building doing? this live how long that would take <laughs> would you guys be down if i did like an eight hour live <laughs> i just left the camera up would that even be something people would would check out help james get going with the help i mean i'll do it i mean I'm, that's what probably what i'm going to be doing on monday after i make the email and do my you know the paperwork part of the job which is in paperwork then i get to the the fun part of getting building and usually that's what i'm putting on you guys youtube videos catching up on live shows and stuff while i'm while i'm doing this but look at everything else looks pretty straightforward uh, i don't see anything you know out of the ordinary so they give you dowels for the uh, to help get the wing together, and now the wing does it say? Gas motors don't care how they're oriented. Gas motors don't care. Okay, that's good to know. Perfect. Um, yeah, because of, yeah, it shouldn't. Now that you think about it, and Picture then I'm looking. Fighter, you have seventy balsa planes. Seventy balsa planes. Seventy. 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 That's 70 more, that's, more than us. that's more than we carry at that's motion rc more. i think that's awesome man that's a lot of just think 70 share a picture of the if hangar. it took you 10 hours to build each one if they're arfs or if they're actual even longer if you built them from kits you know but let's say you average 10 700 hours divided by 24 what are we talking I get, uh, 240 10 <laughs> well that's not even doesn't even sound like it'll probably be more but that's like that's got to be what at least a month of your life just building planes. That's awesome. A month of your life having a great time. That's it. Having sure, a great sure. time. Having a great time. You've been doing this for four years. Unbelievable. I love it. Um, someone's looking for the dimensions of the cowl of the Hellcat. The dimensions of the cowl. Uh, I don't know. What do I need for that? A ruler? <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's about my fist size. <laughs> what do you want the parts? So we got inside dimensions of the do cowl. i get everybody mad and say 165 millimeters six and a half inches so it's six and a half inches long and it is from the bottom let's do it like this from the longest portion about seven and a half inches at its widest or 190 millimeters and in width from the uh, from the widest portion, which is just under that, we are a six and a quarter or 155 inches. Uh, that way. Who else asked? It was TT. TT. Can you tell me the inside dimensions of the cowl and the Hellcat? Does that give you? Let me know if that wasn't enough. But um, I can measure more. But looking at other stuff, so similar. So I'm assuming the elevator is going to be. Yeah, they're not going to, yes. So they do one side on the control circuit because you obviously have to slide this uh, through the back. Yeah, you got to cut a hole, slide it in, then do this. So I usually do that at the same exact time I do my the tail section all the same. This is going to go, I mean, it's going to go together in two seconds. 
That's what that's what I love. It was funny, like what a year ago when, or a year and a half ago when they, when they sent the Fairchild to me and I opened that, <laughs> I was like, I had a panic attack. I thought you were gonna quit. I was like, <laughs> I had a panic attack. I'm like, where am I gonna find the time to do this? And now that you've built a few of them, I'm like, oh, this is you know, it's just a little more tedious than obviously a foamy. Now you're pulling foamies out, you're plugging them in, and you're going. But um, I enjoy it. I enjoy I enjoy the balsa building, even of an ARF. And I did promise myself at some point I'm going to do a kit in my life. I, I want to do a kit and actually learn how to cover a plane. Um, I already have the one in my head of what I want. Hopefully, by the time I do it, Motion RC will get some kits. Um, but I'm, like, ready for it. It's fun to come down on your own, and I get it now. Like, hang out, be in your own world, get to build in, and just, you know, get a movie on and you know just enjoy it. now with youtube like you know with these live shows at night listen to jeff's custom rc he's out there if they're if you're on a tuesday gb linden on a wednesday um uh, dave's rc on a friday night and then they do a zoom or my like, should i even tell you there's like a private zoom you could jump in on not where guys will anymore. stay on not private anymore <laughs> but uh you could jump i sometimes i jump in there and they go till like 3 a.m one time we were up till 3 a.m just about 40 dudes just talking rc uh on a zoom chat uh but you want to follow air marshal for that main wheel diameter please main wheel diameter what is this ask what is this question <laughs> what is this the questions and answer oh, section <laughs> let's move on over to Q what is a. this we're here uh, you got any questions put them in chat 72 millimeters about about 72, about three inches, about three inch wheels. The wheels itself and then the cavity's got to be, I like they did the, uh, they did the work already there, oh, which, is, glue which is great. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's like a pain in the butt to glue in, um, you know, sometimes on certain aircraft. It doesn't, you know, it's molded well, but not perfect sometimes on some of them. 85 millimeters is the well. 85 millimeters is three and three core three and no three and three and three eighths sorry three and three eighths inch if i know how to read a ruler my kids are learning how to read a ruler and it's 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 easier to read it than to explain to someone else how to read it it's funny things you take for granted uh tail wheel you get all your so again you get your linkages they're all um you know, little spinning ones. <laughs> What's the waist forget. size of the pilot? <laughs> What's the waist size of the pilot? Oh man, I've been a thirty-six my whole life. I don't know if they. I don't know what they're talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the owl, this guy. He doesn't have a waist. He's been chopped in half. Uh, the wreck. And then these are your motor. So all your motor mount screws. So everything is here, and I'm gonna get. So probably Monday. Um, or maybe over the weekend I'll, I'll get some of it done. But I'm just good for this. We're not going to do like we, we did with the P40. We did, uh, you know, an assembly video. We're probably not going to do a full assembly because, again, with ARFs, a lot of them are the same. Like, you can watch the P40 video or some of the other. We've done some Balsa videos and basically get the general idea. You know, how to install a servo is not, you know, there's nothing hard about it. If you guys are getting into it, just literally pop the servo in, route the servo lead, and then, you know, you're, you're putting on your, your hinges and just connecting it. It's just an extra step that you don't have to do for the most part anymore in your uh, foamies. Um, but it's the type of thing where you see it once and you do it once. It's just rinse, repeat uh, through the whole rest of it. But I was just looking. That's what I'm, I keep forgetting. The wings. It looks like the wings, you're not going to be able to take them apart. So once you're, so I'm going to be gluing. This is going to be a one-piece wing when it's done. So, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to, but, you know, for you guys out there, this looks like the type of model that you can, uh, you know, if you're handier, you could probably do some sort of manipulation with balsa where you could put screws in the top or the bottom of the wings and be able just to slide the wings off and leave the bottom on. Um, because right now I see they're only giving me two nylon bolts. So that gives me the assumption that they're going to go right here into the bottom of the fuselage just like the p40 but uh i may look into it you know if you could separate the wings and leave you know the bottom portion that'd probably be a lot better um 
as far as taking it to the field or whatnot. Uh, you know, Our buddy Dale taking the whole wing the off. Chat, and he wants to know if those are fully balsa sheeted wings. Are those fully balsa sheeted wings? Um, they are sheeted to right. Well, here's an opening. Here's an opening. So they're not fully sheeted, but this whole front edge is is sheeted and then you've got a couple holes right in the middle you can almost see them one one square two three and then a couple of other uh i wonder why they do that i don't even know why they do that a couple minor holes but so no are they fully sheeted i guess that would say no but uh john killen yeah you probably make them removable easy that's what i'm thinking too right I mean, rather than balsing this, because they, they want two dowels. So I'm just trying to think how I'd do it. I guess through one of these holes, you'd put a piece of balsa on this side that I'd run a longer piece of balsa, get it in here, have it come through, and then try to catch it. And I'd probably catch it through one of the holes uh, here or through the sheeted portion, catch it in two places, you know, similar to a freeway. I bet I could probably 3d print a plastic bit that would uh make it even easier to do maybe i'll try that that's probably a better video than putting this together you know that sounds like a quick tip uh if it is a quick tip <laughs> let me get my pad out actually speaking of quick tip i want to call out justin justin lamb uh if he's out there he gave me a quick tip so if you guys watch the a10 video on monday uh before we get out of here i landed and as i was coming back if you guys saw my my nose gear was like down i didn't realize it while we were filming like i was just and then like the plane just sort of drove remember it drove by me and i'm like i gotta turn around. i thought it was a tailwind that was pushing me what actually happened <laughs> is like somebody somebody called i saw nate called me out of the video said oh your your nose wheel like uh you know thought i broke the nose wheel like it was it was down what actually happened was i ripped i hadn't i hadn't changed the tires on that thing in years you know since i had it when on that last landing, it ripped half of my tire clean up. Where is it? Did I throw it out? I think I threw it out. But like half of the rubber went out. So as I was taxiing back, it was just catching to the to the ground. So I went to change the I went to change the tire the other day, and uh, Justin gave me a great tip on how I could not get the C clip. So the little C clip on the free wing uh, to get the wheel to get the axle off just to do the wheel. I could not, you can't, I couldn't grab it with a, with a pair of pliers, couldn't get enough in there. The thing spins, so you can't really grab it. But uh, Justin gave me a great idea. He said, turn a razor blade completely around, if you could zoom in on that. Break off, if you guys know your X-Acto knife, so this is the part of the X-Acto blade that catches inside, I guess. Like, this would be the square, this is the back side of the X-Acto blade. Break it off right there, and then... I was able to press it right on the on the open part of the C clip and just push it. I had my hand boom, came out in a second. That was like I was about 15 minutes trying to get through, ready to just give up. I'm like, I need to order a whole new reach. <laughs> I was just gonna replace the whole strut with the tire rather than try to change the tire. But uh, that was a good quick tip. So uh, there he is, Justin. Justin, says, Justin for the win. For the win, man. <laughs> for the win. That was like. So when G I'm leaving that, I have a different, that's never, that's a tool now in my, uh, in my compartment, in the arsenal that, but he like came up and I asked him and Jeremy real fast in a YouTube, in a Facebook chat. I'm like, guys, how do you do this? I've never changed a tire. I never needed to change a tire yet on a, uh, on a free wing model before, or, you know, removing those little C cups. But I will say I did, I didn't have my hand there. So I pushed it. I got lucky. I found it on the floor. I had it up. You <laughs> push should have put it in like a, a white bag around the around the strut and then did it into the bag but um i got lucky and found it but it was a really great idea so i may have to make a quick tip of it or somebody should just patent it and make the tool itself because it would probably be really easy to make but uh it's a good one but guys i think that about does it for uh this week's show um I had fun today. This was like nice to take a breather from uh, March Mayhem, but I probably should have just made it one week and just announced the winners this week, but I wanted to give more time because I wanted to get more people, but I did not expect in one week's time that we'd have, it might even be more than 2,700. That's what it was last night. I forgot to check before we went on. 
but the amount of entrance we have if you win this this tournament man then you got a lot of people seeing your aircraft and picking you to be the winner so um unbelievable what's up robert patrinsic brothers rc here thanks for joining us uh love you guys thank you for uh stopping by you guys probably you guys customize you guys customize some stuff you got it next year why don't you customize a motion jet and enter it in the tournament see what happens you guys are i'm sure you guys come up with something really crazy um but no okay so questions and answer before i leave um i see some mig 29 when are they going to be back in stock mr t all i could say is soon i pity the fool who doesn't get a mig 29 uh when it, when it's ready but all i can say is soon they they should be on their way they'll be back in time for this flying season that's uh my best answer for you uh ignacio i don't even know what a tu 160 is off the top of my head um so probably not getting that anytime soon um any other questions did we scroll did i miss some can you give me some tips for repairing a foamy um, right now, I, I can't go to scroll down a little bit, uh, where Mateo, um, a friend crashed his and I bought it for a little money. I did see to repair it. I mean, tips on, we have a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, YouTube's going to be your best friend, but repair your foamy, you're going to want glue. You're probably going to want hot water. It depends on how bad the crash, uh, off the top of my head, uh, a video that comes to mind is Brandon McCormick, RC plane, just plain crazy, just plain crazy. Just playing crazy, uh, he did an amazing video on his FMS Hawk where that thing, you can't tell that it was the same. You, you thought he bought a new, like, I almost think he bought a new fuselage and is playing it off, but he does, He didn't. He's a fantastic, uh, uh, he fixed the foam model to make it look like it's brand spanking new, and he did a whole video on how to do that. Uh, but again, it depends on, you know, how hard you want to go on it. But for the most part, foam tack is your best friend. Get it together, and then you're going to need some sort of finishing uh, where you sand it, repaint it. You know, it's going to take some time, but it's doable depending on the damage. Uh, back to Ignacio Tanks, hopefully soon. Uh, just stream my OV-10 and P-38. I saw, I think I saw that on there, Charles, but, oh, yeah, I can't wait to see you customize the P-38. Triple uh, one six three waiting to be revealed. Oh, man, that's crazy. A triple... I, I, I want to get back. I think you guys saw us do the double lippish. I want to do the triple two lippish wings and and a uh, like an F-104 Starfighter in the middle between the <laughs> between the lippish. Do a triple and make it look like something, you know, one of those like I love like the way the 50s would have envisioned the future, you know, that like retro. I guess you'd call that almost um, steampunk in a way. No, probably not. But just something uh, retro futuristic, Hi, if Alpha. you will. Hey, Alpha, he's here. He's always watching. Uh, thanks so much, George. Don't you know? Don't thank me, or you know. Glad you love it. But uh, this is motion. If it wasn't for them, I I wouldn't be able to do it. I'm just happy that people dig it. You know, we like we like doing it. It's it, it, it's a lot of work to uh, produce a week. <laughs> weekly show i give like you know try to think of the think of the shows that go on every night with new content um that's hard i'm doing it in a week is tough and i rely on a lot of the show is done by you guys you know i'm so glad so many people in this hobby love to share because that obviously in a small way helps our show but also in a big way helps the entire hobby the fact that we have all these guys out there whether you're an actual influencer affiliate type person or not just by posting, your video might be the first video anybody ever sees who gets into the hobby. And that means something, you know? So the fact that we do it, I think we have a good community. And we, I think this hobby uses social media well uh, for that. But that's a whole nother conversation. Um, and that's it. Not real kit, no covering or sanding. That's not a real kit. Thanks, David. Glad you, uh, you know, went bold to comment <laughs> that out there it's an arf kit man that's that's you know there's kits arf kits almost ready to fly um this is how you start you can move back the other way so uh you know nowadays kids are going to start with a plug and play foamy and work their way towards modeling because you're going to either enjoy it or you're not you know i don't i still i still see it i'm in some balsa groups where people just want to you know yell at foamies like you know people it's like are you kidding me? Buy yourself a foamy and buy yourself a kit. 
take the time in the background, but when you want to go fly, grab your foamy, run out, go fly. And then eventually you'll be done with your kit and you can go fly that too. Have a little bit of everything. Try it all. Uh, enjoy it. But that's it. Oh, Justin, nice, man. What was it? FedEx just dropped off your first motion RC jet. So what was the first motion RC jet you went with? L39. L39, he said? Oh, I don't know. I'm guessing. Oh, he's guessing L39? <laughs> T33. Let's see. T30, or or it's going to be the Avanti. No, you put in T33 already. I put it. T33 is my vote. <laughs> T33 is my vote. Come on. Eight seconds. Work on that Black up. Horse MIG. Uh, can we get the Stealth Seahawk Heli, please? Ignacio, did you just have miss the thing? Yeah, <laughs> Ignacio. Just, just for us to say yes or no. Get on right? Hobby Squawk <laughs> and post them on the forums. <laughs> That's what, you know, you need a list. Yeah, Patricia, as long as your flight's paid, my, my, my kid, right, F-35, whoa, <laughs> you went, you went for it, I will say, I wouldn't recommend the F-35 as a first jet, I hope you've flown other jets, but you're gonna have fun with it, uh, dial down the rates, that's all I'll say, dial down the rates, expo, especially on the roll, because she can, you know, she can boogie, so, uh, you know, be ready for it, just be ready for it. Uh, what I say? I saw Patricia where I said, even if it's a paper airplane, it's funny. My son, I got them some of those Chuck foamy Chuck gliders. My son loves it. My kids love it. They run outside and they just, all they want to do is throw, throw the Chuck, Chuck glider. So I want to surprise them one day. I'm going to turn one of those Chuck gliders into a, put a little prop on the front of it or something, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, <laughs> just say, Hey, awesome. check it out. Throw it. And then just actually <laughs> fly it around a little bit or put a little battery in it and just let them control the air, let them throw it. And just move the ailerons back and forth, you know, be able to turn it himself for a second or two. He would love that. He would dig that. But uh, I think that's it, guys. And I will say, oh, and Justin, that the F-35, in my opinion, one of the nicest looking jets up close. When you see it, the way that's painted, um, I love that scheme with the lightning bolt on the back. Beautiful looking jet. Oh, that is first jet, is first motion jet. Okay. Oh, it makes way more sense. So... <laughs> After your first motion jet, usually I think they they like somehow triple or quadruple in your hangar just in, you know, very <laughs> short time. So just watch out. You might walk into your hangar uh, in like two weeks and see like five more. They just magically multiply and your bank account sort of goes opposite of it. There's some sort of relationship there, but, you know, it's, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. But uh, guys, I enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun today, but next week... On the show, we will be unveiling the winner. So you still have until next Thursday to vote. Um, and I'm sure most of you, probably everybody did. I had a hard time. Uh, I just, I still have no idea who's going to take home this prize. But um, so next week, that'll be the first thing we do. It'll probably take 10 minutes just to announce. We'll announce the overall winner, who's the one of the 64. And then we'll show you the points and who... Uh, who won the voting portion where you'll win a gift card and at that point um you know that's it i see one more griffon wings i love your plane so much that i'm going to answer your question which tank is behind me that's the t72 that i customized that's the king tiger that uh wesley miller and the sherman that me and wesley M miller sorted together he showed me how to uh customize this one i did myself and i got the kv1 over there the yag panther which I love, and the uh, and the uh, Abrams over there. But I need some more of the German ones. I really like the German. But the KV-1, I still haven't customized that. I want to paint that thing up. But now I'm off the schedule. Now i got to say goodbye again. That's it for me, guys. Uh, thank you guys for joining. Have yourselves a great weekend, whether you fly, drive, uh, boat, whatever it is you're going to do, RC. Have fun with it. And we'll see you next week right here at Motion RC Live. Bye, guys.